Okay, so let me show you how this works now. So our agent now has all these tools it can use, right? So the first tool we're gonna use is search Google. So we're gonna search Google with, if we start with this query here, we can follow up with, let's say, Llama3 Human Eval. This is gonna be our query, right? We're gonna go out to Google, we're gonna collect that, we're gonna put it into a rag. So you can see we scrape these two URLs here from AI Meta and The Verge. The content has been added to our vault, right? If we go to our vault here now, you can see all of the text here from those two web pages has been embedded and now we can start searching this, right? So if we go uh, back to our terminal here and now we can use the frames look in vault, that means we're going to access our rag and ask how many tokens was Llama3 trained on, right? Now it's going to go fetch that hopefully and give us the answer back. So you can see according to the relevant context from the vault, it seems that Llama3 uh, was trained on up to 15 trillion tokens. So Llama3 was trained on 15 trillion tokens. So yeah, perfect. Our agent also has a tool that allows it to send mail. So we can just go send a mail with that information to my email address, please. So let's try that. Okay, so you can see email sent successfully. And here we got some information. Uh, according to the text, Llama3 continued to improve log linearly after being trained up to 15 trillion tokens so yeah i just think that shows how powerful the new llama 3 8b is just running locally on ulama there's no lang chain or anything like that just a custom script with some good instruction following uh, very impressed how good it actually is to just following the instructions we gave it uh, so yeah we're gonna take a look at how i kind of set this up in the code and some more examples Recently, I had a lot of requests if I could spend a bit more time on kind of explaining how the codes worked and kind of how the logic and how this combines with the AI or LLM model, right? So I think I'm going to do this in this video. So if this is something you are not interested in learning, if you just want to see kind of how this exact script works, you can just skip a bit ahead. But if you want to learn kind of how to set this up, how to create these function calls for yourself, uh, yeah, you're welcome to stay. Okay, so I just want to start going quickly through what kind of functions I wanted for my system. So I created a send email function. This gives us the opportunity to actually send out mails, as you saw in the intro. I have a search Google function that uses the SERP API to bring back URLs from Google. And then we can kind of go scrape those URLs and get information that will be put into our RAG system. The check context function is that uh, the one we are using to actually search our rag setup. And that is kind of the tools I have available now. Uh, we're going to add one more tool, so I'm going to show you how you can do that too. Uh, but I wanted to start down here in our uh, uh, chat function. Because this is where the intelligent part happens, right? So in our system message, uh, I want to focus on the search Google part here. So I just set this up pretty straightforward. So you are an AI agent, exporting following instructions. And uh, yeah, we just go ahead. You have a set of functions you can use. And you have access to these functions. And then we kind of dump the functions here. Uh, if you see these lists here. Uh, yeah, you can see this. And this is also going to bring in all of these properties with these descriptions. Uh, yeah, I'll come back to that. Uh, but let's focus on the lines where we are uh, instructing how we can use the search Google function. So what I just went ahead and tried is if user's input contains search Google or similar or some sort of question or query, generate a function call in the following format. So the format is quite important here. So we have kind of these wrapper tags, right? Function call. And inside those wrapper tags, we have this structure that the, we have something called parse function call. So this function is always out looking for these kind of structures if it should trigger a function. I'm going to explain that uh, right after this now. So you can see replace the user by the query with the actual query by the other user. So this is what requires our model to be intelligent and understand what kind of query we actually are looking for, right? And you can see we are actually using the Dolphin 3 verse, Dolphin verse now of Llama 3. Very happy with this. I've set the temperature to zero to bring this, uh, yeah, mostly deterministic as much as we can, right? Okay, so I just want to go into now the explanation of kind of how this works, right? Okay, so we kind of went through the system, hopefully that was clear. 
Uh, now let's move on to how the function gets uh, function call gets executed. So let's say you're the user, you put in, hey, I need to find some stuff about the new Llama 3 from Meta AI on Google. Can you search for me? And step two then is going to be the AI system understands. This is kind of the intelligent part. And when uh, our system kind of sees this user input, it sees Google, it sees search, uh, then it kind of knows that, okay, now we have to prepare uh, a function call, right? And you can see the AI system listens to your request and figures out that if you want to search the web. So that is kind of the intelligent part. I tried this with a few other different local models. Not all of them can do this. But Llama 3 8b looks very good for this. And then it kind of prepares a response with two parts. So uh, it could be like a natural language reply. So sure, let me search Google for the new Meta Llama AI. And we have a second part that is kind of a secret instruction note. And this comes back to our function call wrappers, right? So it created this here because it kind of understood that, uh, oh, here we need to use one of our functions, right? And it creates the name of the function we want to use. Uh, we need some arguments, right? So we have query. And then it understands what is the what the user wants to search for here. Uh, it doesn't want to search for stuff. Uh, it understands that we want to search Google for new Llama 3 from Meta AI. And it puts this into our uh, parameter here that is query, right? So uh, I wanted to kind of show you if we think of this more like this Python dictionary here. We have a function, we have a parameter name, and the model has to kind of figure out what value it should put into this query here, right? And if it's intelligent enough, it kind of understands that this has to be the Llama 3 from Meta AI part of our input, right? And then we can kind of move on to step three, and that is actually finding the instruction note. So there's a special function called parse function call that acts like this detective. This means that it always looks through the AI's response for this secret instruction note, which is wrapped in this function call and function call tags. So I would think of this like this uh, parse function call is always monitoring the output from uh, our AI model. And if it detects these two wrappers here, it's going to grab this note and yeah, uh, do the function call based on the instructions inside of this secret note right so you can see once it finds the note it reads the instructions inside and if we go down here you can see step four understanding the instructions so the instructions are written in like a special code json which looks like yeah like we just had a look at here the parse function call function translates this code into like a simple list python dictionary that the system can understand so this is kind of what i showed you up here so it kind of translate this the secret note into this very simple readable dictionary here right and like i said this list tells the system which function to run and what information to use in the arguments and the last part is of course executing on this instruction so now that the system understands what you want it runs the search google function because we put that in our dictionary right this goes uh, this function goes to google searches for a term we put in and grabs the top results. It saves this information. This could be URLs, right, in its memory. And then we can kind of, after searching and saving the information, the system lets you know what it did. So this could be something like uh, top search result and it lists the URL and we added this to context. So that is kind of how, uh, this annoys me, okay. That is kind of how this function calling work, kind of how I set it up. We're not dependent on any lang chain or anything. This is just, should you call it manual function calling but we do depend on something called uh, open ai function so this is kind of how we describe our functions so we always want kind of this description and this gets added to our function list so convert to open ai function uh, and yeah this is also helpful I, I don't think i'm gonna go through that in specific detail but this is also a part of it uh, so yeah, I kind of hope uh, you understood that and uh, I think this was I learned from this too to kind of go through in depth how this works and We're gonna create a new function so you can kind of show how we set this up too, but yeah, hopefully this was understandable Okay, so let me kind of show you how the system works before we kind of add a new function 
but I just want to show you one quick thing here in the code. So this is kind of the surveillance part I was talking about. So we have something called message content, right? And this is what the chat function returns. And you can see the surveillance part of this is this variable called function call. So this takes the returned message content, right? And it puts it into this parse function call. If you go up here again, you can see this is searching for these two wrapper tags. So if our output from the chat function contains these wrapper tags, uh, then it will kind of understand that if function call is one of these tags, uh, you can see if one of them is uh, understood to be sent email, yeah, we're gonna do this. And yeah, you see, this is kind of the surveillance part uh, of our uh, system. So I just want to quickly show you that. Down here is just a simple true loop with a user and an agent. And we have our conversation history. So we append everything uh, from our assistant and our user to this conversation history, right? To keep the context. Uh, other than that, I think that's fine. Let's just do a few more, yeah, showcases of the system before we create a new tool or function. Okay, so let's run this now. So this is running on the Dolphin Llama 3 model on Ulama, right? So let's say, hey, I'm doing some research into local LLMs. It would be great if you can help me in the search to find the available Ulama models. Maybe use Google. So let's start with this. Okay, so we have some results back here. You can see it kind of understood that it had to search for available Ulama models, that's good. So we return all of this. So it says content added to context. If we go to our text file here and open this, you can see we kind of, yeah, got some information here about Ulama. So now we are kind of ready to search this. So let's ask about maybe Llama 3. Uh, okay, so let's try that. But before we do that, if we see in our system message now, if the user input contains check context or similar, followed by a message, then we can kind of go into our RAG system, right? So let's try that. So let's just go check context. Does Ulama have the Llama 3 model? Okay, so let's press that. So now we're gonna do the RAG search like and bring back the information with this. So you can see, yes, Ulama supports the Llama 3 model. You can use it, Ulama pull Llama 3 command to import it and create a custom prompt. So yeah, this is looking good. Uh, okay, so let's say we wanted to send this information to our email now, right? If you go back to our system message, you can see if the user input contains same email or similar, extract the information and yeah, create this email and send it and trigger the function call. So let's go back here. If we do good, send that information to my email address. Yeah, so I put in my mail and let's try it. Okay, so you can see email sent successfully. And yeah, we got a mail here, so let's read it. So you can see Ulama supports the Llama 3 model. You can use this to pull it. And yeah, this works great. So every single function we kind of asked for in this setup here now worked perfectly good. So I would say I'm really impressed how responsive this Llama 3 model is to following instructions. It's a big step for this agent. But remember, this is an 8B model. Uh, you could do this with GPT-4 before, but I didn't have any great success with these smaller models. But uh, unlocking this locally, I think is a big deal for these AI agents, right? Okay, so now let me kind of show you how you can add your own functions. Let's say you wanted to create a specific tool for a specific use case. So uh, the function I want to add is called write to notes. So this is gonna contain some content that we are gonna write or append in this case to our text file just called notes.txt, right? So let me show you kind of how we can integrate uh, and make this into a function call. Now that we have our function, the first thing I wanna update is our system message. So let's just go down here, make some space. So let's just paste that in here and let's go over it. So yeah, just leave that like this. So. If the user input contains write note or similar, followed by some content generator function call in the following format. And then we have our wrapper tags, right? Function call. And we have a uh, write to notes. And of course, we need an argument. And this is going to be the note content and the content we want to put in, right? So replace the user provided content with actual content provided by the user. So it's a very easy setup. 
uh, but yeah, and we gave some example here. So if the user write note, use uh, uh, note content, we're gonna add this to notes.txt, right? So that is kind of the first part we want to do, update our system message. Next, I kind of want to update our convert to OpenAI function. So I just want to add like a property here. That is going to be note content. It's a string. We have a description. So content to be written to note.txt file. Right. Okay. And let's just uh, add something here to our functions list. Right. So we want to convert this. And let's grab our function here. So that's going to be right to notes, right? Okay, so that is the setup for that. Next, we want to go down to our chat function and add some logic here. So uh, I think it's just going to be like this. So we're going to add the else if statement here. And yeah, that's it. So this is the right to notes function. And that should be it. So uh, let's go ahead and test this now and see if we can actually write something to the note.txt notes.txt okay so let's just run this now so let's do a can you search google to find an email address from chris from all about ai so let's see if we can find it okay so i did find my website and that's added to context let's do check context what is the email address to chris uh, okay so we have an email address here okay now let's try to write this to our notes let's just try can you write to notes the email address to chris did that work let's have a look yeah, Chris Kitanis email address. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, that was a bit weird, but uh, we got our email address. So yeah, our function is working. Yeah, that is what I wanted to share today. Had a lot of fun playing around with Llama 3. Uh, Wednesday's video is going to be a video featuring Grok and the Llama 3 70B model. Uh, so look forward to that. <laughs> That's just crazy. Uh, but other than that, hope you learned something from this. And as always... If you want access to just the full code here, uh, just become a member of the channel. I will invite you to our community GitHub. Uh, you will get access to the community Discord. A lot of people there now, so uh, yeah, a lot of fun. And there will be more uh, examples like this coming out soon. Uh, a bit of a different style this time. I hope it wasn't too long, and I kind of hope you learned something. Uh, other than that, have fun playing around with Llama 3, and I'll see you again on Wednesday.